The year is 2047. The world is unfortunately at war and you've had to flee to the mountains. To survive, you need the basics. A stove for cooking food on and so that you can sterilise water so that it's safe to drink. But there's a problem about to hit you that's going to push you to breaking point. Oh come on, I only need one bar. Where are you? Oh yes, one bar! Huh? No! If only you had a rocket stove like this. Powered entirely by fire, the stove cooks food, boils water, and has a USB charger to charge your phone. And I'm going to show you how to build one. But first, I want to thank this video's sponsors. This project was my biggest and most costly to date, and it would not have been possible if it were not for the generous support of my sponsors. Thanks so much to DuraWeld NZ, who hooked me up with their fantastic Hugong Wave 200D3 TIG welder. Having this welder was a key component in this project, as it allowed me to weld the stainless steel that made up the bulk of the rocket stove, and various aluminium components along the build. When it comes to TIG welding, I'm a rookie. Despite that, this welder was a breeze to set up and use, and you'll be seeing it in many future projects. And a big thanks to EasySwap Gas for hooking me up with a full argon bottle for this project. With EasySwap Gas, you'll never have to pay bottle rental fees again. And lastly, thanks so much to JLC PCB who provided the circuit boards for the voltage regulation circuit in this project. They offer fast production time as quick as 24 hours from ordering to your order being shipped worldwide and ordering is as simple as uploading your Gerber file and choosing your design preferences. Order 5 PCBs from as little as $2. So how well does this stove perform? Well, being based on the classic rocket stove design, it burns wood very efficiently and as you can see here, almost completely smoke free. This is where the fresh air is drawn in and I've made a choke so that I can control the temperature of the fire. So I've designed this rocket stove to have dual boilers, we've got a tank on each side and the tanks are connected with tubes that go right through the uh, inside of the chimney. We've got a fill flap on the side, it can boil over two litres of water in about two or three minutes if you're burning good wood. It has a pot stand so you can show off your culinary skills even in a survival situation. Nope. And thanks to nine thermoelectric generators, it can produce one amp at five volts to charge your device. More on that later. Or at night, you can plug in an LED light for extra lighting so you can keep knitting after dark. Uh, I mean, hunting, hunting after dark. Now you might be thinking to yourself, ah, oh, you've just gone and reinvented the wheel. If I was in a survival situation, I could just use one of these, a solar charger for a mobile phone. And that's true, these do have advantages. They're cheaper and more portable than the stove I've built. But importantly, you're at the mercy of the weather. When I plug the solar panel into my phone on an overcast day or a rainy day, it just doesn't charge my phone. And that's where the stove has a big advantage. It'll work in all weather conditions and even at night. So how does this thing generate electricity from fire, or in other words, heat? Well, it does it using these. This is a TEG or thermal electric generator. How does a TEG work? Well, if you throw the whole thing in a bag of ice and cool it down, you won't be generating any power. And if you heat the whole thing up with a blowtorch, you still won't be generating any power. So how do you generate power with a TEG then? Well, that's a great question, and it's all about temperature difference between both sides of the TEG. If we're able to keep one side of the TEG cool while keeping the other side hot, we then have a temperature difference across both sides, and we generate power. The greater the temperature difference, the more power is produced. Take this setup for example, we've got a candle heating one side of the TEG and an ice cube cooling the other. We've therefore got a temperature difference across the TEG and as you can see we're generating a small amount of power. Now this small amount of power is nowhere near enough to do something useful like charge a mobile phone. For that we're going to need a greater temperature difference and a lot more TEGs. So that's why my rocket stove has nine tags in total, so it can produce adequate power for charging a mobile phone. 
and the tags are cooled passively by these heat sinks I have mounted to them and the hot side of the tag is mounted to an alloy bar which absorbs the radiating heat produced by the fire. All the information for this build including diagrams, circuit board files and components can be found through a link in the video's description below. But now let's get right into the build. Cue the moustache. Dang it, I meant montage. Cue the montage. Yep, yep, here we go, just watch. If you've never welded stainless steel before, one important tip I want to mention is you need to have the surface absolutely clean from any contaminants such as oils or grease. So to clean all my stainless steel that I'm going to be welding, I'm going to wipe it down with acetone using a microfiber cloth. After welding, the tubes were trimmed down and any burrs were removed with sandpaper to avoid contaminating the water with any metal if they were to break off. The studs that secure the heat sinks were screwed into the metal and then welded in place. With the prep work out of the way, I could move on to welding the rocket stove together. I had this choke laser cut from 3mm stainless by my good mates at CPS in Talpo. 
check out the description for a DXF file if you need one cut also. So now I'm at the stage where all the metalwork fabrication is complete. Before I move on to installing all the electronics, I first want to light a fire and make sure that the rocket stove performs how I expect. Now because I've chosen to make my rocket stove out of stainless steel, I'm expecting to get some really interesting oxidisation colours happening as the fire heats up the stainless steel. So let's give it a try. The only issue that became evident during that test was the hinges started to bind when they got hot, but nothing a file can't solve. One issue I hadn't counted on was the box section had warped during welding. Fortunately, nothing a hammer can't fix though. Although the surface wasn't perfectly flat, it was good enough for my purpose and the thermal paste should fill in any small imperfections. Now I can move on to mounting the heat sinks and tegs. I also installed a fan to see what effect that would have on the power output. So I've got four TEG units installed, only one heat sink, and the test setup's going to involve running the DC fan from a LiPo battery pack, and that's so that I can accurately measure the power being generated without the fan using any of that power. Now to measure the power being generated, I'm going to connect in series two 8 ohm resistors, giving me a total resistance of 16 ohms. And by measuring the voltage across the two resistors when connected up to the TEG units, I'll be able to measure how much power has been generated. So I'll put the results from that test up on screen. Now I was not expecting to power the national grid from my stove here, far from it but I was disappointed with how much power I could generate with a setup. So what's holding this back from producing more power then? In my setup here, the hot side would be getting up to around about 100C, but that throws into question the temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side. And the problem, I believe, stems from my choice of heat sinks. This is an extruded alloy heat sink, and typically this style of heat sink doesn't have a ton of fins with a huge amount of surface area to dissipate a lot of heat. So I need a more efficient heat sink to dissipate more heat. Now it's tricky finding a heat sink large enough 
to cover all of my TEG units. So instead what I'm going to do is use a CPU style heatsink, one that has a lot more surface area as well as heat pipes. Just attach it to one TEG unit and see how much power I can produce. That's it for part one of this build. Click up here for part two. Okay, this is getting awkward now. Just click up here for part two. So how was your day? Yeah, I've spent most of mine waiting for someone to click on part two up here. So far it's been a bit of a bore.